Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Why do you think Raila Odinga is called Aguambo? Aguambo is a Greek word which simply means the mysterious one. The truth of the matter is that Raila Odinga is the enigma of Kenyan politics. The politics of this country revolves around Raila Odinga actually from 2002 up to today. And in the last election, it was projected that Raila Odinga was easily going to become the president of the Republic of Kenya because of the support of the deep state. But that dream was never realized. William Ruto was declared the president. Raila Odinga went to court. The courts confirmed William Ruto as the president as the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya. And after that court ruling, Raila Odinga went underground. And most of his supporters really wanted Raila Odinga to stay that way. But a few days ago, Raila Odinga made a public appearance at uh, Jivanje Gardens during one of the Bunge Lawanainchi meetings down there. And his supporters were not very happy with that move. Because for them, they wanted Raila Odinga to really take a break from politics and let, you, I mean, let Kenya Kwanzaa government rule the country uninterrupted. But who is Raila Odinga? Raila Odinga attended that Bungela Waninji meeting and as usual, he attacked Kenya Kwanza government. He highlighted their failures so far. And Raila Odinga supporters were really very mad at him. They wished Raila Odinga would have just kept quiet. A few days after that statement, Raila Odinga then went to Madare. Again, he made another similar statement. Then immediately, William Ruto mobilized his troops. And they started attending funerals. They started attending events. And they made Raila Odinga his, I mean, their subject in those meetings. And I've been thinking, was Raila Odinga laying trap for William Ruto and his brigades? Because after Raila Odinga made those appearances and Kenya Kwanzaa started attacking him, Raila Odinga then disappeared. William Ruto was in Rongai today. Raila Odinga, who is in uh, India, is still his pet subject. Was there a chance that Raila Odinga was actually laying a trap for these people? In this video, I want to explain to you guys why personally I'm now convinced that Raila Odinga actually laid a trap for Kenya Kwanzaa and they got inside that trap. But before we get into all those details, for those who are watching the channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is now. Let us get back to the main issue. But before we get into the main issue, I want to make this request. Please give this particular video, this one here, thumbs up. Just press that thumbs up. That's how you can support the channel. And again, for those who can, drop their comments. What do you think? Do you think Ray Ludinga laid the trap for William Ruto and his brigades and they fell for it? Now, let us get to the main issue. Raila Odinga is currently in India. And before leaving for India, Raila Odinga had started questioning William Ruto and the promises which he made to Kenyans. Then Raila Odinga, while in Bondo, made some statement which most people are not able to understand, even personally, that his supporters should just relax because they'll reclaim their victory. From that statement, Raila Odinga then went straight to India. But why do I have this feeling that probably Raila Odinga laid a trap for William Ruto and his team and they've actually fallen for that trap? Why am I saying so? Number one, 
I think Raila Odinga wanted William Ruto to respond to him over government failures. William Ruto made certain promises to Kenyans. There are certain things he said he was going to do immediately after taking office. One of them was to lower the cost of unga, which, by the way, during campaigns, I mean, he was free to say, but it was not going to be possible to lower the cost of unga. There are certain other things they, they promised. So Raila Odinga went outside there and challenged him. So William Ruto and his Kenya brigades, Kenya Kwanzaa brigades, have been responding to Raila Odinga, especially over failure to lower the cost of living. And you know, by constantly responding, it means they are, they are reminding their supporters that whatever they told them, they cannot achieve. And in fact, they've also been blaming Raila Molodinga and Uru Kenyatta for the failure. Remember, these are people who now are the president and the deputy president. They have, if there's certain things which Uhuru could not do and they can do, this is the time. Uhuru actually went further and even subsidized the cost of uh, fuel, which lowered, you know, in this country, normally the moment you increase fuel by two, five bob, the cartels will always increase other costs. So today, William Ruto is still accusing Raila Odinga that they needed time. Rikendi Gashagwa could not respond further. He had to ask for two good years to see the cost of living going down. So I think Raila Odinga wanted them to continue talking about this particular high cost of living and to justify why they can't do it. So that's number one. Number two, I also tend to think that maybe Raila Odinga knew that he was going to leave the country. And he wanted Kenya Kwanza to make him an agenda. You see, when Raila Odinga is out of the country, then William Ruto attacks him somewhere. The next day, in the media, that will be a headline. Today, William Ruto was in uh, Rongai, talking about Raila Odinga. The other day, I saw Ichungwa in parliament talking about Raila Odinga. So they've actually made Raila Odinga an agenda. Why do you think that's important for Raila Odinga? For me, if you ask me, Raila Odinga is staying relevant as long as these people are still attacking him, as are still talking about him. Remember, Uhuru Kenyatta was the president. He was defeated. He left the scene. Raila Odinga also accepted the results. He's out of the scene. Then you keep on talking about them. You know, you keep on talking about them. So, in my view, Raila Odinga wanted to re remain relevant as long as he's out of the country. That's number two. Number three, I also tend to think that one of the things Raila Odinga wanted to do, he wanted William Ruto to constantly keep on talking about these particular promises which he made to the people. Because without, before Raila Odinga talked about some of these things, William Ruto had started talking of other things. He had started talking of oh, the judges, you know, started talking of other things there. But he was not talking about the main thing, which was the cost of living. And I was telling a friend of mine, who is a member of this channel, that when William Ruto said that they lower the cost of Unga to, say, less than to 70 bob, you know, that's not possible. It's not possible, practically possible. Because the cost of Unga in this country, for you to get the actual, you just go to Uganda, check the cost of Unga in Uganda, and check the cost of Unga in Tanzania. Because those are our neighboring countries. As long as the cost of Unga in Uganda is 200, and the cost of Unga in Tanzania is 200, the way they are, there's no way the cost of Unga in Kenya can come below that. No way. No way. But I think he wanted Ruto to continue talking about these promises. Because every time William Ruto is talking about these promises, he reminds the supporters. that You know, for example, William Ruto told his supporters that Uhuru Kenyatta was doing nothing. That they promised before Jeddah. How many housing units do you think 
President Ruto has unveiled, which Uru Kenyatta had initiated under rumors in completion. Several. So this is what Raila Odinga wanted him to do. And number four, also tend to think that Raila Odinga is keen on Ruto blaming him and blaming Uru Kenyatta for their failures so that Kenyans themselves will get tired. You know, it normally reaches a point where you talk about someone. Yeah? Today you talk about him. Tomorrow you talk about him. The next day you talk about him. You know, there are things which, even if they were doing, they have now stopped. You have the opportunity to change. And you can't change. You still drag their names. So I tend to think that probably Red Odinga wants Ruto to continue blaming him and Huru for the failures to achieve to deliver on the promises they made to Kenyans. So that Kenyans themselves will say, okay, you've talked about Raila, you've talked about Uhuru for a long time. Tell us what you have done. And lastly, I also tend to think that it will also help Raila Odinga in tracking Jubilee performance. Because probably Raila Odinga has realized that it will not be practically possible for William Ruto to achieve, let's say, 40% of the promises he made to Kenyans. So Raila Odinga wants to continue talking to him, I mean, raising some of these issues. Then he can make more promises. He can continue promising that, okay, this one I'll do in two years. This one I'll do in these years. Then he will keep track. So by tracking performance, it means at the end of the four years, probably it will be clear whether they've achieved it or not. And if they shall have not achieved it, it will be possible for Raila to mobilize a team to counter William Ruto. The only challenge, and this was uh, said by his supporters and was the biggest fear, was that by coming out at this stage, it means Red Odinga was going to allow Ruto the opportunity to try and fix certain uh, loopholes which were existing. I don't know what you think, but that's my take. In case you're watching the channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click the subscribe button now so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Thank you and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.